Halo GT1 Plus versus Halo GT2. I think that we need to examine what some of the differences are and answer some of your questions. And this video is gonna have all of the information that you guys need. If you're looking to buy any of these, I'll have a link in the description down below. Support my channel, it really helps. If you guys have questions, go ahead and let me know in the comment section down below. And if you guys wanna read something about this, I'll have a link to an article on my website in the description down below where I have gone over some of the pluses and minuses of these two headphones and really like, a more kind of just simple comparative analysis between the two of them. Now on the surface, the Halo GT1 Plus, they have the Qualcomm 3020 chipset, and that gives them a couple of advantages. It's gonna give them a lower latency due to the aptX audio codec, so that playback of these headphones uh, is going to be more in sync with your music. If you're trying to use a pair of headphones for PUBG gaming, these headphones are going to be the pair of headphones for you. Okay guys, so next up is the Halo GT1 Plus. Now the Halo GT1 sounded very mediocre when I first got it, and with the inclusion of CBC 8.0 and the Qualcomm 3020 chip, I'm curious to see how much the audio quality has improved. Here, standing on a street in Hanoi, Vietnam, fair amount of background noise, how do I sound? Okay guys, right now we are outside. This is the Halo GT2. Uh, there is no background noise suppression. There is no, uh, there's no kind of general um, voice quality enhancement features. Like there's no CBC or anything like that. With the Halo GT2, uh, tell me how I sound in the comment section down below. So for gaming, the Halo GT1 Plus will be the superior product. Next up, let's talk about battery life. Because of the Qualcomm 3020 chipset, the Halo GT1 Plus is getting you an extra like 45 minutes to an hour uh, in regards to the playback compared to these. So you're looking at close to five hours depending upon volume with these. And with these, you're looking at between three and a half to kind of four, four and a half hours. Uh, with the Halo GT2, but still kind of average battery life for both of these headphones. Next up is sound. Now, although these do feature the aptX audio codec and these do feature the AAC audio codec, um, I, I don't really hear much of a difference, to be honest with you. I think that the quality of the speaker drivers in these are identical to what's in these. And at like the cheap low end for speaker drivers or for headphone drivers, you're not gonna hear a big difference in sound based purely on the codec. So sound quality for both of these headphones is identical or almost identical, but really the big difference is like the latency for both of these. I think that both these headphones sound totally fine. There's other headphones that are near both of these in price that I prefer more, uh, which would be the Awe T19. And I did a video comparing the Awe T19 versus the Halo GT1 Plus. Dollars more, I think that these are the better headphones. Next, let's kind of just talk about like the physical construction of these cases. The Halo GT1 Plus, they feature the same case as the Halo GT1, meaning a very cheap, like very, very cheap feeling lid that closes okay. Uh, a micro USB port on the back, no indicator lights. The Halo GT2, they feature an open top case and the plastic feels thicker and like more robust, I guess we would say. There is an included USB cable on the back. How long this USB cable will last, uh, I don't know. In fact, it, it rattles a little bit, but I've had no problems with these up to this point. Something else people were worried about was the headphones falling out or dirt or debris getting in them. And in regards to falling out, uh, you're not gonna have issues with the Halo GT2 falling out of the case. In regards to dirt and debris, um, if you guys have dirt in your pockets, that's gonna be an issue, but 
I wash my clothes. So now at this point, you might be thinking that the Halu GT One Plus is just like far and away the better deal or like the right pair of headphones to get. And this is where real world usage changes a little bit. Although the microphone quality on these is gonna be a little bit better, I find that the controls and the overall user experience of the GT2 is a better, more kind of intuitive experience. Because the Halu GT1 is such a small headphone and how it fits in my ear, um, I oftentimes don't have the most like positive uh, kind of touch interface with them. Although compared to other headphones uh, in this class, specifically the Huawei, uh, T19, I think they always have way better touch controls, even though they kind of fit similarly as flush. But compared to the Tronsmart Spunky Beats, which are smaller and fit even more inside my ears, uh, the controls of the Halo GT1 Plus aren't that bad. That said, I think that for a really small pair of headphones, the user experience of the Halo GT2, the fact that it has the physical button that kind of sticks out on top of your ear, it gives you one place to always tap and always activate the headphones. And what this means is that when you're trying to use the headphones, let's say at the gym, or just overall use it, using them to like go through your music, the usage experience of the GT2 is a more seamless kind of better user experience in my opinion, based purely on the controls. At the end of the day, who should be buying which headphones? Well, if you're gonna be playing a lot of PUBG, the Halo GT1 Plus, if you're going to be at the gym or you're using these specifically for music and you are the type of person to kind of uh, skip, rewind, go through your music more frequently, I think that the intuitiveness of the controls of the GT2 is going to be something that you enjoy. At least for me, I don't find that I'm like really changing the position of these in my ear. And also when I go to like actually activate them, the 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 way I can touch one part of the headphone and then click through just means that I'm not like changing the position of the headphones that much. I try to do that with the Halo GT1. Oftentimes I find myself putting the headphones in my ear and then like going to, to click them and then because I'm holding them uh, a specific way, they activate and, and it's just inconvenient. So for those that are listening to music more frequently and want to use the controls more frequently, the Halo GT2 is a more intuitive option. For those that hate button controls, and care about gaming and microphone performance, I think the Halo GT1 Plus is the better option. And overall, just like as a complete package, I think the Halo GT1 Plus is a little bit more compelling, although I think that for certain people, they're going to find a better overall user experience with the GT2. I hope you guys liked this video. If you guys wanna see comparisons to other things, go ahead and let me know in the comment section down below. If this video gets 50 comments, I will compare the Tron Smart Spunky Beats to the Halo GT1 Plus for you guys. And if this video gets 100 comments, I will compare the Tron Smart Spunky Beats, the Halo GT1s with the MPOW M5, which right now are kind of my favorite budget Qualcomm 3020 like true wireless headphones on the market right now. Till next time, it's been Mitchell coming to you guys from Hanoi. Peace.